and in this video we're going to take a look at 10 things that you may or may not know about Overwatch. We'll cover topics that are based in lore, game mechanics, and things that are just simply fun to know. But all these Overwatch topics are either obscure or widely unknown. And the topics will get more difficult as we go, so remember to play the game where if you learn something new you hit the like button. But if you didn't learn anything at all, don't feel bad for one second to also hit the like button. Alright, let's get started. So the first topic is much less of something that I think people won't know and more of a public service announcement. I'm doing my civic duty by telling people how to kill Bastion a bit easier. So what you may not know is that when Bastion is transformed into his super gaming skill mode, also known as the sentry configuration, there's a weak point that becomes exposed during this transformation. Yes, on the nature and bird-loving robot's backside is a blue Energon cube. And if you focus fire on this, Bastion will die faster than Optimus Prime in the original animated movie. As a matter of fact, striking this weak point will deliver double damage. As we all know, Overwatch was developed by Blizzard, the developers of some of the most iconic games, well, ever. So it's no surprise that there's many nods to other Blizzard games hidden throughout Overwatch, and Diablo is one of those games. For one, in the official Overwatch animated short titled Hero, you can clearly see Soldier 76 smash a Diablo pinata on a gang member. Also, the same pinata can be found in the center of town in the Dorado map. Additionally, if you head to Route 66 in the starting diner there, you can find a Diablo brand hot sauce. But even more interesting of all is a check on the wall. This check is written out by none other than Deckard Cain, the Elder Sage of the Diablo series. And lastly, the check is dated for the same date that Diablo 3 was released on PC, May 15, 2012. Alright, now for the next one we're going to take a quick look at Reinhardt's shield. So essentially we all know that this thing is meant to take a ton of punishment. But what you may not know is that no matter what, even if the shield only has a single hit point left, it will absorb the entire brunt of an attack. For example, as you can see here, even with only a little over 100 hit points left on Reinhardt and 80 points on the shield, the entire impact of Tracer Sticky Bomb is negated. And this will work for any single burst attack as long as it's on the proper side of the shield. For number 7 we're going to take a quick look at Reaper's Reload. Now as we all know Reaper is such a badass that he doesn't actually reload when his shotguns are empty. He instead simultaneously drops both of his weapons and pulls out two completely different fully loaded guns every time he needs ammo. He's a badass and that's all there is to it. Well what you may not know is that there's actually a little trick to this which can make him reload slightly faster. All you have to do is right after you hit your reload button immediately follow by pressing the melee attack. Reaper will strike forward with his melee attack, but instead of striking with what should be empty fists, it will put two completely reloaded weapons in each hand. This will slightly shorten the reload time as it's quicker than the entire reload animation. Now obviously, if we're talking about Blizzard, then we're talking about World of Warcraft. WoW is one of the most culturally influential games of all time. It has its own movie, it's been featured as a focal point in an episode of South Park, and tens of millions of people have played the game since it launched over a decade ago. So of course there's going to be some references to Warcraft in Overwatch. For one, on the Hanamura map, you can find that Murlocs, everyone's favorite crazy sounding amphibious creatures, are the mascots for the ramen shop as well as the vending machines. Also, there's a murloc painted on the side of the huge starting vehicle at the Shrine of Anubis. Additionally, not far from there at the Shrine, you can find hieroglyphics, but hidden among these icons is actually the symbol representing the Horde, one of the two factions of World of Warcraft. Also, when closely inspected, the movie posters around the world of Overwatch revealed that they were created by Goldshire Pictures, and Goldshire is an early starting town in World of Warcraft for the Alliance side. Adding to this even more, if you check out the movie studio in the Hollywood map, you'll see the Goldshire logo is actually the icon for the Alliance. And lastly, when Torbjorn pops his ultimate ability, he yells out Molten Core. Molten Core! And Molten Core was the name of one of the raid dungeons in the vanilla World of Warcraft game. Alright, for the next one, we're going to take a look at Genji and his ability to deflect attacks back on the opponent. As I'm sure we all know, Genji can deflect an assortment of attacks, like an entire clip from Tracer or basically instantly kill Bastion in turret mode. 
Well, what you may not know is that Genji's Deflect can return your enemy's ultimate skill as well. Deflect can kill Farah in a barrage of her own missiles, and it can even take down McCree in a flash. More impressively though, it can turn any deflectable ultimate hostile towards the entire opposing team, meaning it can turn May's Blizzard drone around on enemies. Tracer's Pulse Bomb, or even Zarya's Graviton Surge. And last but not least, the deflect can turn Genji's brother Hanzo's Dragon Strike back around on the sibling that struck him down as well. Now though, to put the cherry on top, not only can deflect turn Ultra's hostile towards the enemy, but it can also turn a support heal around benefiting your team instead. That's right, Genji can deflect Soldier 76 Biotic Field, making it heal your team instead of theirs. <laughs> Alright, the next one isn't that special, it's just something that I don't think a lot of people know because not a lot of people mess around with random custom games. Well, what you may not know is that when you're in a custom game and Soldier 76 is selected multiple times, it will change the number of his name, increasing by one for each additional soldier. So, like I said, not that special, just a neat little obscure detail. For the next one, we're going to take a look at McCree, the Overwatch hero that thinks it's high noon at all times of the day. It's high noon. For one, what you may not know is that McCree's first name is Jesse, and more importantly, a developer at Blizzard shares the same name, and in fact, Jesse McCree's name was pulled for use as the Vigilante Cowboy. The next one is extremely risky and very situational, but it's still useful in one specific situation. So we all know Lucio and his completely forgettable skill to ride across walls. Well, one thing that you may not know is that when you're in the Ilios well map, you can actually ride around on the inside of the well in the center of the objective point. This can be extremely useful to avoid detection while you're waiting for backup or trying to hold out during an overtime phase. Oh, let's break it! Damn! For the last topic, we're going to talk about the Gibraltar mission. Now, as we know from the opening cinematic, Overwatch was once a group of agents tasked with defeating a warring sect of Omnics, sentient robots. After peace talks, the war ended, and government sanctions forced Overwatch to disband, with the members going their own separate ways. Now, in the Gibraltar mission, like several others, your objective is to either defend against the payload making it to a destination, or escort the payload to its destination. But what you may not know is that this mission actually takes place before the game world's present day. The battle you take part in here is a prequel of events leading up to Overwatch being recalled back to active duty. In the Overwatch animated short titled Recall, after a near-death fight with Reaper and seeing the state of chaos the world was enduring, it was Winston who finally recalled the operatives of Overwatch. And he did this from the Overwatch base in Gibraltar. As a matter of fact, during this mission, if you start on the escort side of the operation, you start in Winston's office from the animated short. Here you can find his tire hanging from the ceiling, his desk with loads of peanut butter lids just like in the animated short, and most importantly, you can find Winston's to-do list. And from the board, you can see that Winston must move the satellite to the launch platform, then launch the drone into synchronized orbit, triangulate the global recall signal, and then he'll finally be able to recall Overwatch agents back to active duty. And on the screen next to this list, you can see the status of the recall satellite is currently decommissioned. Meaning the events of the animated short recall have not happened yet, because without following the steps on the board, Winston wouldn't be able to initiate the recall. And that's what the Battle of Gibraltar is all about. During the actual mission itself, the payload escort is the satellite drone from Winston's list. And the final destination to achieve victory is the platform to launch the drone into space with this rocket. So in other words, in an alternate timeline somewhere out there, every time you successfully defend and stop the other team from delivering this payload, in essence you're ensuring Overwatch is never recalled. We're terrible people.